Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, we're going to be covering the best profession pairings that you can set up for the War Within to make the most gold possible. And I'll let you guys in on a little secret, profession pairings doesn't actually matter. Now many of you are probably thinking, what, why are you making this video? But I thought it would be great to actually tell you exactly why it doesn't matter, or it may matter for some people, and also give you a few tips, especially if you are leveling alts, some few tips to keep in mind with different racial abilities, different new currencies coming into the game, and all of that. So this video is going to be broken down into the why section, and also the tip section, so I highly recommend that you stick around, but without further ado, let's get started. And alright, up first, let's talk about why profession pairings doesn't actually matter as much in the War Within compared to Dragonflight. Many of you are probably familiar with Renown-based recipes, which existed in Dragonflight, and based on, you know, what Renowns gave what profession recipes, you definitely wanted to match them to your profession. For example, if Enchanting had a recipe at Renown 12 with the Tuscar and Tailoring did as well, it was beneficial to group them together, so you only had to grind to Renown 12 on one character instead of two. And these same Renown-based recipes still exist, but a huge change coming into the War Within is that Renown is account-wide, which is beautiful. So, for example, right here, I am on my level 80. If we take a look, my current renown is 4, 3, 4, and 1. And right now on screen, I'll show you logging on to my alt, and I have those exact same values. Meaning, once you hit renown 12 on one character, you have hit that on all characters, and you can buy any sort of recipes that you need. This is a great opportunity to showcase the first step of my new War Within spreadsheet. This will be linked in the description. As you can see, it's definitely not finished, but you can start seeing some valuable information here. And just for an example, as you can see, inscription, in order to get the contract with the Assembly of the Deeps, you need to be Renowned 2 with the Assembly. Now, of course, Renowned 2 is not very hard to get, but you also need to be Renowned 2 to get the tailoring bag. So. Previously, you would kind of want to group those together. Granted, Renown 2 is not very high to start off with, but once you hit that Renown on one character, you have it for everything, so your scribe can be separate from your tailor, and you're good to go. Additionally, the same thing, and honestly more important than the recipes, is your knowledge points. For example, right here, as you can see, the inscription knowledge points is locked behind Renown 12 with the Assembly of the Deeps, and Engineering is as well. So if this was still account-specific rep, I would highly recommend to group your scribe with your engineer, because, you know, you would only have to farm that Renown out once. But since this is account-wide, your main character can be your scribe, you can have an alt that has engineering, and simply you can just buy this on both characters since Renown is account-wide. So this is a very beautiful change. I'm very excited about it, and that's exactly why profession pairings really doesn't matter that much anymore. Additionally, beyond that, we also have account ride currency, which is super beneficial for those knowledge points and recipes that we just saw earlier. For example, one of the highly sought after recipes, the profession bags with tailoring, which there's one for each profession, they require 1500 kej each, which is this brand new currency right here. Now, let's just say you want to buy five recipes, 1500 kej a piece, that gets very, very expensive. But with the war bands and the account wide currency, you can actually give currency to other characters, making it account wide and making this just so much easier. You can go do world quest or go farm up kej on all of your tunes. You just get them from weeklies, etc. And then you can just send it over to one character who needs your recipe. So I personally don't have any kej on my other alts, but I can show you this with the crystals, which is for one of the other factions. And as you can see, I can click on transfer. And currently one of my alts has 13 and one of my alts has 11. So if I really needed that 13, you know, I can put it right there. My alt's new balance is zero. My new balance is that. Hit confirm and boom, I just transferred my currency. So that is really awesome. Once again, going back to this list, as you can see, knowledge points are also tied to Kej. 
So instead of having to farm it independently on each character, you can share the wealth among others. And also recipes, here's all of those tailoring bag recipes. You also have some enchanting recipes, even a blacksmithing, and there's probably a few others. Like I said, the spreadsheet isn't finished, but these two bonuses are just super, super awesome. Now, moving away from the why nots, I do want to talk about the whys and some things that you can do if you really want to min-max, and this ultimately just comes down to your playstyle. And we're first going to start at the very, very basics and move on to the little bit more advanced. And so to start off, you know, the very basic level, I highly recommend if you're going to gather at any point within the War Within, I highly recommend to group your gathering professions together. Now, of course, there are three professions. There's herb, mining, and skinning, but I highly recommend that you pair herb and mining on a single character. The reasoning is, is that gathering, you make your gold through actually getting out there, spending time, picking up herbs, you know, ores, etc. And if they're paired together, you can do two things at once. Many of the routes for herbalism, as well as mining, either overlap, you know, cross each other at some point. So if you have both professions, as you're looking for herbs, and you come across an ore, you can loot both, and you just upped your gold per hour. So I highly recommend, at the end of the day, you know, don't worry about min-maxing races or anything else. Just try to get herb and mining on the same character to make as much gold possible when you're actually going out and gathering. Now, in terms of skinning, it's really up to you. Many people would like to do group farms with skinning, so you could pair, you know, a crafting profession with it. You could pick up, if you do go out there and do some sort of skinning routes, you could pick up another gathering profession if you want, if you want to double down on mining, herbalism. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. You can kind of stick skinning with whatever you want. You'll likely, we'll talk about this in a second, but if you decide to do some alt army stuff and have multiple professions, let's say you have two alchemists, you know, you can attach alchemy to skinning, you can attach tailoring to skinning, it's really up to you, but at the end of the day, make sure you have your herbalist and your miner on the same character. Now, up next, what I highly recommend that you do right now if you haven't already, this applies to all expansions, not just the War Within, you need to get yourself a goblin. The reason for this is that goblins have a racial that are tied to vendors, which means if you're a goblin, you automatically get the reputation-based discount at vendors, which might seem small, but this adds up a lot, especially if you're mass crafting. So for example, right here, I am on a Blood Elf and I have pretty low renown, as you saw earlier, low reputation. And if I speak to this tailoring supplies, my spool cost 75 silver, my thread cost 11 gold, and you can kind of look at all of the values here. Now on screen, I will show you my goblin, who once again has the exact same renown because it's account wide. And you'll see that the spool is selling for 60 silver. So for just the fact of being a goblin, I'm saving 15 silver per thread which adds up a lot, especially if I'm buying thousands of thread. Now, many of you might be thinking, okay, 15 silver really isn't worth it, but let's go over here to the inscription supplies. Right here, the basic quality one vials are selling for five gold a piece. If you're a goblin, that goes down by a single gold, so that goes down to four gold, meaning if you buy a stack, if you buy a thousand, you just saved a thousand raw gold by simply just being the goblin race. So if you guys haven't gotten a goblin yet, I highly recommend it. Additionally, remember, you know, cross-faction friendly with the War Within, war bands are becoming a thing, so even if you're fully an alliance player, your goblin will be able to interact with everybody, interact with your other characters like normal. Also, just a sneaky little thing, I haven't tested it in the War Within, I will fully admit, but in Dragonflight and in Shadowlands and basically every single expansion before it, you can normally teleport your goblin in. So if you create a goblin and you either have some friends with a summoning portal, you can go to a summoning stone near a dungeon, get yourself a warlock friend, whatever, and with a few of friends or a multiple accounts, you can actually summon that low level goblin in. I have a YouTube short about this, I'll have it in the description below. It was for Shadowlands, but unless they, you know, fix something, it worked in Dragonflight, I'm sure it'll work in the War Within. Meaning you don't even have to level this goblin, 
Simply get him into the city, get him near vendors, buy all your items, send them off to your crafters, and save some easy gold by just getting yourself a goblin. And finally, the last thing I want to mention for all of the huge min-maxers out there are racials. And to those who don't know, in Dragonflight, they have reworked the racial system with the new way professions work, and these are carrying over for the War Within, and I've created a quick chart for you about all of the profession and nice related racials that can help you with gold making. And so, for example, right here, the Blood Elf race, if you're a Blood Elf, you automatically get plus 5 skill added to your enchanting. So this is added on top of, you know, your actual skill of your profession, your skill coming from your profession tools, skill coming from materials, skill coming from specializations, etc. This is all on top of that. Something we're not exactly sure about because there seem to still be playing around with recipe difficulty. We don't know if any of these plus five bonuses will actually peak you over to the next quality. But even if it doesn't, you know, you could save a few specialization points by having this plus five. So you can spend your specialization points in other categories. So this could just be beneficial for general gold making, especially at the start. And so if you were an enchanter and you really wanted to max it out, you should have your enchanter be a blood elf. Additionally, right, we just talked about goblins. I put that little discount right there just for you to remember, but also goblins automatically get plus five alchemy skill. So if you wanna make an alchemist, you could definitely make it a goblin and etc. This kind of applies to everything. I'll just fully admit the cooking skill really probably doesn't matter that much. I wouldn't worry about it. The cool tier ends are slightly different Instead of getting a plus five to a single profession, it actually gets plus two to any profession. So for example, if you pick up tailoring and jewel crafting, you'd have plus two tailoring and plus two jewel crafting. So this is kind of just a well-rounded race, especially if you want bonuses to two professions. And going back to tip number one, when I talked about gathering, I want to bring up Drakthir. So depending on what you're doing, you know, if you are going to have gathering separate, you could definitely go, for example, Turin, because you'd gain, you know, plus five herbalism and you also get plus 25 herbalism speed. Deafness relays to gathering speed. So if you're simply going out for herbalism, you definitely could do that. The High Mountain Turin is mining and Worgen is skinning. So if you're kind of trying to go for that one gathering profession, you can. But for your dual gatherer, I highly recommend Drakthir. The reason for this is yes, you're losing out on skill bonuses. You're also losing out on gathering speed. However, you are gaining 2% perception, which perception is your ability to gather more rare materials. And so this works for mining as well as herbalism, if you have it on the same character. So not only do you just get the perks of being a Drakthir, but you also get a plus two perception boost for both professions, which can be very, very beneficial. And the final thing I kind of want to leave you on, this was actually posted by a Reddit user. I'll have a screenshot on screen and they make up a very good point. This is just something to think about. For example, let's say you want to make your enchanter a blood elf. You obviously have another primary profession slot to fill up. And so, you know, you may decide to match enchanting with inscription, but if you want to max out your inscription, you should be a Nightborn. So this is where kind of pairing with multiples gets a little bit confusing. But what you can also look into is using this for alt armies. I will have a video going more in depth on alt armies soon, but Two professions that have cooldowns is tailoring as well as alchemy. So having multiple alchemists, having multiple tailors can be a very good way of making a passive gold. So what you can do on this list is, all right, this is my enchanter. I'm going to pair it with alchemy. Oh, okay. This is my alchemist. I'm going to get a benefit. I will, you know, pair that with tailoring. Then, you know, okay, maybe you don't do the tauren, so you have the knight born for inscription. Maybe you also put an alchemy person there. Maybe you don't make any of these. You make a dwarf for blacksmithing, so maybe you attach alchemy here. Jewel crafting, you attach alchemy. Cool tauren, you know, it can kind of be anything. Maybe you pick up alchemy and tailoring to have a buff to both. 
okay, you have quite a few alchemists, maybe you want to apply tailoring here. This is kind of the same blacksmithing skill, but, you know, either you can slap alchemy if you want to make it, you know, etc. And then finally, you have your skinning character, you need a new profession, so maybe you'll put tailoring there, etc. So basically, you're able to pair these kind of ideal profession spots with just an extra profession and turn these into your alt army. Now, of course, you do want to make sure that you cover all professions. For example, leatherworking is not on this list. A lot of people like to pair leatherworking with skinning because it just makes sense, and there's definitely no wrongdoing for that. Um, so make sure you are covering all professions. Definitely don't want to leave any hanging. At the end of the day, having all professions covered is the main priority, but you can kind of decide to set things up like this if you like. To those who are interested in my personal setup, I will tell you right now that I am doing the it doesn't matter approach. <laughs> so I will have a probably a spreadsheet on screen right now. I'll show you what my personal pairings are. This is just what, you know, my professions have been for the past few expansions. And I'm lazy and I'm not going to change them. Of course, all of my alts, I'm going to slap alchemy and tailoring on. Um, but to just give you an idea, if you do want my personal setup, there it is. It's nothing special. I don't recommend necessarily setting it up this way, but hopefully the points in this video allow you to think a little bit and you can start prepping, you know, for the war within the best you can. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any other tips for people, feel free to leave that in the comments as well. Knowing me, I have probably forgotten something. But yeah, guys, if you made it this far, I really, really do appreciate it. I know my videos are on the longer side, so thank you so much and... Have a great day.